Hello everybody and welcome into the fourth episode of CPE Bach in Pieces. My name is Wim Winters, I play keyboard music mainly from Bach to Beethoven, reconnect those two giant composers, see the line of evolution, think some elements in you, rebuild a context so to see if there are hidden layers of emotion in the music that we all know so well. I'm convinced there is. So, previous episode of CPE Bach in Pieces was called number two, which was a little bit of a mistake. That was number three. It has all to do with the pilot episode that I was calling zero and it's become one. But anyway, this series is about reading together with you the book of CPE Bach, the Versuch über die Wahre Art als Klavier zu spielen, three times on the true art of keyboard playing in pieces, in bits and pieces, coming at the end to hopefully, maybe, a book publication with my take on CPE Bach and the recording of the Probus Stücke. I'm doing it together with you because, as said before, I'm not a CPE Bach expert. I'm diving into that together with you, hoping that you will correct me on the go, because I will probably say sometimes some stupid things. Let's hope for that. In this, in this episode, I'm going to talk about the content of the two volumes of the Versuch, book one and two. The previous one, we went through the editions, which was a long episode, but I think that's an interesting one because it shows also some aspects on CPE Bach's business-like uh, aspects, as he was a businessman and a musician. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the content of both books. So roughly said book one is about performance and technique of written compositions. Book two is about everything that needs a musical or textural input from the performer like basso continuo, toro bass, accompaniment and um, improvisation. There was planned a book three as we have seen in the previous episode on P.C.P. Bach planned to write a book on uh, the art of composing but he not even started that it was too late in his life and it's a pity that we cannot talk about that would have been wonderful but it is like it is so diving into part one which is compared on the total volume of volume one and two combined about 35 percent so it's the, the second volume is much thicker than the first volume focuses on the performance and contrary to 19th century editions or 19th century books on keyboard playing or piano playing, where you often will see a very basic instructions to start with uh, note values, even the names of the notes, time signatures and things like that, CBE Bach starts at a higher level. He assumes that his reader, his, the musician that goes for his book already knows the basic stuff. So that's important to remember. And if you've never seen or never dived into that book, it might surprise you to see what the content of that book actually is. It has, the first book has mainly three chapters. First chapter is extensively on fingering, which is about 30% of the volume of the content of part one. 50% about he devotes talking and writing about ornamentation. And 20% at the end he dedicates to the performance of the music itself. So the focus on ornaments might not surprise us since of course he lived in a time where many ornaments, ornamental signs so to say were used and of course that needs explanation. The focus on fingering however might surprise you because since today often we consider that as something individual that's not of difficult even to unify. The question is however and we will see that while reading the book if that was also the opinion of people like C.P.E. Bach. And Talking about my own history, when I was in Amsterdam, I was trained eight years by Jacques van Nootmessen, and Jacques had a very well taught system of fingerings. We had to use fingerings, different systems from music for swelling, so to say, the period around that. Then go to Bach, um, uh, books too, they even had some other uh, principles. Then going further to the late 18th century, early 19th century, Mendelssohn required another fingering, but was different from the music by Liszt, Brahms, and then we went to the French Romantic um, period where he had another fingering, 20th century, and so on. So we had a system for every time. And what I was seeing in the class and met with my colleague students, that whether people would have like the Japanese girls, for instance, with the very tiny hands, very fine hands, or with my hands, which are much bigger, we all applied the same system. And so it's possible and maybe not so individual as we think. 
uh, it is. Jacques also had a very clear uh, focus on the combination or the actually the influence on fingering and expression. And if we read CPE Bach on that, it might be um, very clear why he came to that because CPE Bach writes. More is lost through poor fingering than can be replaced by all conceivable artistry and good taste. We will dive, of course, in the chapters on fingering more on that. But this just to say that on the three volumes, the three chapters on the first volume, fingering might be the one that we think, well, what's that about? Because that is something we make our own individually. But I believe we have some um, insights to gain by going into that since E.C.B. Bach really clearly says there is only one good fingering for every figure. So we'll see how he guides us in that. On ornamentation, and I take my notes, he gives a very uh, clear overview and I will read the German and the English names for the ornaments that he's talking about. He will treat on the Vorschlagen von den Vorschlägen or the Appoggiatura von den Trillern, the Trill, von dem Doppelschlage, or the turn, von dem Mordenten, the Mordent, von dem Anschlage, the compound Appoggiatura, von dem Schleifren, the slide, von dem Schneller, the snap, and von den Versierungen der Fermaten, the elaboration of the Fermat. Fermat, I hope I pronounced that correctly. So, and when the, as said in the previous episode, the first volume went, first and second edition with 18 Probestücke, so six sonatas, what can Versailles is uh, 63, 1 to 6, and he composed T.P.E. Bach in, 18, in, the 18, in the 1787 edition, six new Probestücke, so that's the what can 63, 7 to 12. So that's about it for the first volume. Going to the second volume, which is 65% of the total, obviously, if the first one is 35%, it's goes in detail on toro bass accompaniment and on um, improvisation. So originally C.P. Bach gives kind of a weird overview of 41 chapters, which is difficult to grasp. But fortunately, Mitchell in his 1949 edition gave a, added a, a top layer on that or several of four chapters, and I will go through them. So in book two, C.P. Bach is talking on the intervals and their signatures as a preparation for the Toro Bass or Basso Continuo. Then he talks about, and that's a very extensive chapter, then he talks about the accompaniment and as a closure he comes to the improvisation. Our focus in this series, as we're going for now, will be on the book number one. And if I read a letter from C.P. Bach, which he wrote on April 10th, 1780, in the midst of negotiations in the prices with the publisher Schwickert, you know, we will remember of the previous episode that Bach sold his rights for the book in 1780 to the publisher Schwickert, Leipzig. So Bach gives, uh, Bach gives us his view on the two volumes and he says, quote, in my letter referred to above, I mentioned that I sell both parts separately that each individual part is being sold for just three Reichsthaler and that the first part by itself can be of use only to someone who does not want to study harmony. But the second, which I created with great diligence, cannot be understood well without the first, since, it, since in the second part I refer to the first on nearly every moment. Without further repetition or explanation. So that's what we're going to do, focus on number one, on the performance technique and understanding of the um, ornamentation of C.B.E. Bach's work. And personally, that's a side note for me as a performer, I was trained very much as a performer. Of course, we had all the regular stuff on Basta Continuo and things like that, but I didn't develop that. And that's maybe also a sign of our time that we have to be aware of the fact that whatever we try to do, the distance with those sources, with those people, with that time, with that context becomes only bigger and bigger. We don't live as students anymore in the master's house for months, for years, doing all kinds of things in the household as a kind of payment for having lessons each day. And so our modern conservatory system is a kind of 
very far distance from what the practice was in those days. So very few people still today, it's, it's, it's changing though, and for the better are occupying themselves with real improvisation and, and pass continue in that way. Very generally spoken, because I know some people who are really, really, really good in that. But that's a kind of skill test of a kind of skill division that one focuses more on improvisation, one more on the basso continue and one on the performance. And that's in general is something you can say. So book one is more for me and I think also more practically usable for what we are going to talk about. But we will see how this series evolves and maybe including some other specialists on that might be a topic or an option as well at the end. That's we're going to see. But for now, I hope you um, have a clear picture now of what the books is about, the editions we have been talking about. And next episode will be the last one before we really dive into the content. The next one we'll be talking on the influence that the book had on later generations. Hope to see you then again. If this is your first time here on Authentic Sound, love to have you here as a subscriber. Uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon because then you will get notifications by YouTube. Also for the live streams where I talk in depth on in some masterclasses on the performance technique, my take on those pieces. We're doing now Beethoven, but that is changing from month to month. And then we'll see each other very soon again. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.